A lot of Northwest anglers use heavy cannonballs when out trolling for salmon, especially for Chinook salmon in Puget Sound and the Columbia River system, as well as in the ocean, but also for coho and, and other fish like that. Uh, they're a great alternative to downriggers, especially in, in snaggy areas. You can run them on a weaker piece of monofilament, which we call a dropper, on a sliding weight, and then uh, if they snag up, you can just break them off and you can recover your, your flasher and lure. However, it's always been a bit of a guessing game for me trying to determine you know, how much weight, how much line to have out, uh, and where my gear is approximately. So today I'm out on Lake Chelan. It doesn't have any current here. A lot of places that we're going to fish with have current, and I'll talk more about that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use this little data logger here from Census Ultra by ReefNet. And I'm going to let this data logger go out at 10 foot increments by itself as a control because it does have a little bit of weight to it. It weighs about an ounce. So I'm going to go from 10 all the way out to 150 feet at 10 foot increments and record the depth that this sinks to on its own. And then I'm going to couple it with a bunch of different sized cannonballs from 6, 8, 10, and 12, and then jump up to 16 ounces and do it also at 10 foot increments to see uh, just how deep we're actually getting and then I'll subtract the impact of the data logger itself. I'm, I'm gonna assume that they're additive. I think that's probably a pretty safe assumption. And then I'll be able to develop a depth uh, data chart for different cannonball weights. And I'm gonna do it at two different speeds. I'm gonna do it at 1.5 miles per hour and two miles per hour. And hopefully that'll help you adjust if you're fishing in current a little bit because in some parts of the Columbia River system and in Puget Sound when there's uh, tidal flow, you're gonna you know have somewhere around 0.5 to 0.7 miles per hour in current generally. And so uh, what I wanted to do is to be able to give you two different data charts to look at at different speeds to see how it impacts depth. So now for this trial, I'm gonna be using um, 50 pound braid since that's what a lot of salmon anglers run. I'm using my Shimano Dakota which I've checked at home to make sure that the line counter is accurate out to 150 feet plus minus just a couple percent. And I'm going to use my Hummingbird Helix 5 GPS to try and get an average speed. So, you know, for 1.5 I'm going to hover between 1.4 1.6 and for 2 I'll try and stay 1.9 to 2.1. So I'm going to get started recording my data, and then when I get done, I'll come back to you in my home office, and we can go over the results. So after I got off the water, I got back, uh, downloaded the data off of the data logger into the computer, and started pulling out all of that data for the data logger itself and all the different weights at different distances and speeds. And I saw some interesting patterns, patterns that I've actually seen in similar trials I've done with lesser weights. So at speeds of 1.5 miles per hour, all the weights actually pretty tightly cluster together, especially down to around 70 feet. And then past 70 feet, there's clearly some sort of line drag uh, coefficient going on here. Uh, they all start to flatten out just a little bit, but they do start to separate by the weights quite a bit more. Of course, most notably, the six ounces is really, uh, seems to be really impacted by uh, line drag, and the 16 is, of course, overcoming it better, but just makes sense. And then ultimately, you know, we sort of top out at 70 feet um, with the 16 ounce cannonball at 1.5 miles per hour. But if we look at the two mile per hour data, um, they actually all kind of stay pretty separated pretty much the entire time. There's some data points uh, further out where, you know, like eight and 10 ounce kind of get a little bit closer together and that might just be measuring error, I'm not sure. Uh, but for the most part, they all stay pretty spread out. It doesn't get quite as deep, but it still gets down into like the upper 60s, which surprised me. There's not a huge difference in terms of depth um, out at like 150 feet of line out depending on your speed, but around 70 feet of line out, there is actually quite a bit of difference between 1.5 and two miles per hour. So there's definitely some sort of line drag thing going on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a data table 
uh, available for you free to download. I'll put the link in the description below. I will also do the colorized version because I know some people are more visual and appreciate that uh, as well. Um, so you can download both of those, print them off, um, or just download them, keep them on your phone as a reference. Um, if you do that and you want a way to show support for this channel, you can also hit that super thanks button down below and just make a small one-time donation. It helps me generate this type of content and these useful charts for you. Uh, additionally, I will also put links to um, 3x5 and 5x7 stickers. The 5x7 is what I recommend because it's a little bit easier to read. I have an example one right here. This was for my kokanee trolling weights. It's like 1 to 5 ounces. So this kind of is a continuation of that um, 6 to 16 using a little bit heavier line that we would typically use for salmon. Uh, so yeah, I'll put links to all those below. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know in the comments section below and I will get back to you. Otherwise, I'll see you out there and just remember, fish smarter, not harder.